Hello, and welcome to Friendship Lutheran Church in Taylorsville. My name is Doug Ramsey. I'm a member here at Friendship. And since 2016, it has been my privilege to serve as your Senate Secretary. The theme for this year's assembly, Strength for the Journey, was inspired by the story found in the second chapter of Mark's Gospel. The story is a familiar one. Jesus has returned to Capernaum. His reputation as a teacher and a healer has grown. And so it is when four friends arrive at the house where Jesus is staying, carrying their paralyzed friend on his mat. They find that there is such a crowd that they can't get in the house. They can't get their friend to Jesus. Friends are not deterred. They are instead so determined to get their friend to Jesus that they climb up on the roof of the house and they dig a hole large enough to lower the man down on his mat until he rests at the feet of Jesus. We're told that Jesus saw their faith and he said to the man, Son, your sins are forgiven. I wonder if that's really what the friends expected. I wonder if they recognized the value of the gift that Jesus gave their friend. I wonder if they recognized like some of us fail to recognize that healing often begins with forgiveness. The church leaders that were there, however, they did recognize the value of the gift. In fact, they questioned whether Jesus had authority to give the gift. Jesus heard their grumbles. And he said, which is easier to say to the man, son, your sins are forgiven, to tell him to get up, take his mat, and walk home. Just so you know that I've got authority to do either. Well, he did both. The man gets up, takes his mat, and goes home. All those things are in the story. All those things are worthy of reflection, but what I would like for you to ponder with me just a moment is what's not in the story. You see, what's not in the story is the verse where the paralytic cries out, Jesus, forgive me. What's not in the story is the verse where the paralytic says, Lord, heal me, make me whole. In fact, we're never told that the paralyzed man ever says anything to Jesus. What we are told very clearly is that Jesus saw the faith of the man's friends and said to him, Son, your sins are forgiven. Get up and walk. Though he never asked for either, he received healing and forgiveness. I chose this particular place, the chapel here at Friendship, to share this reflection with you because for me, this is a place where that scripture has come to life. Every, most every Wednesday morning for the last 12 years, I've gotten up early. I've gotten up, got ready for work, but instead of going to work, I come here. I meet two of my friends. We spend about an hour, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, just talking. Sometimes we talk about really important things. We tend to talk a lot about folks that we know that 
are struggling with health issues or with the loss of a loved one or a job issue. We talk about problems in our community and in our churches and in our country. We have had some fairly deep philosophical and theological conversations over 12 years. Sometimes, though, we end up talking about who we ran into at Walmart or about the new truck that so-and-so got. We solve a lot of practical problems. We've engineered water wheels to turn generators and built cabins and laid out fences all right here in air-conditioned comfort. Come to think of it, what we talk about is not consistent. It's not always important, but what is consistent and what is important is that before we leave this place, you'll find the three of us here at the altar on our knees. We pray for those folks that we talked about. We pray for the issues that we face in our families and our communities and our country and in our churches. We pray for each other. Over that 12 years, there's been a lot of life has happened. Celebrations, graduations, and moving of kids out on their own and into the world successfully. Been some mourning, too. Guy and Wesley both have lost both their parents. I have lost two of my closest and dearest friends, men who were each part of my life for almost 30 years. What's that got to do with the story from Mark? Well, you see, there have been some Wednesday mornings along the way that uh, I knew it was my turn to pray. And the words just failed me. Sometimes I couldn't start. Sometimes I would start and my words would be overrun by my tears. And to be perfectly honest with you, there have been a few Wednesday mornings along the way when my hurt and my grief and my anger were such that I was afraid to open my mouth. Because what I was afraid would come spilling out, well, it wouldn't really sound much like a prayer to me. In those times when the silence was deafening, Guy and Wesley have never said a word to me. They never asked me what's wrong because they knew that's part of being together every Wednesday morning for 12 years. That's part of praying together every Wednesday morning for 12 years. They've never told me, you know, we got to go to work sometime today. A hand on my shoulder or an arm around me but they never said a word to me. What they have done in those times is pray for me. In those moments where I could not or would not go on my own to God, Guy and Wesley have prayed for me and loaded me on a mat. And they have carried me and laid me at the feet of Jesus. And friends, I am confident that in those times, God's response 
has been to say, Doug, your sins are forgiven. Son, get up and walk. And my friends, that is strength for the journey. Amen.